Welcome to an exciting night for a lot of different reasons here at the Hospitality House Gala. I'm Mike Max from WCCO-TV. Thrilled to be back as your MC tonight for what promises to be a motivating and inspiring night. If you've never been here before, brace yourself because you're gonna see some talented, talented people up on this stage. As the world and our community continues to change rapidly, one thing remains constant, and that is the mission of the Hospitality House. Let that never go away. To provide a Christian outreach to the youth and their families in North Minneapolis for over 64 years. God, as you break this today, we can pray over our food and the people who came today to press the people that came to who came to hospitality us to help us grow in our food. We can be blessed by God's power and will. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> I have four beautiful young ladies that's going to come and give you a, a wonderful presentation on what it means to be blessed. You're going to hear a little bit about the song. It deals with the three Hebrew boys. It's a hip-hop song, but it talks about how this generation is constantly being faced with the pressure of selling out to the culture. I know the way to be blessed. Hey. Call me, I get you. Let's smoke. 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 Let's to me, Miss Brenda was like a second grandmother or mother. You walk in the door, she was always smiling. While she was strict, she was always kind. She was always ready to listen. When someone said, Mr. Charles, Mr. Charles, Morell's behind the front desk. His mom's here and he won't leave from behind the desk. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh Lord. <laughs> So I go behind the front desk and it's Burrell there. He had a really rough day. His, his mother, who's a single mom who works hard, just got off work and I'm sure he's probably afraid of some type of consequence or some type of punishment for having the eventful first day at Summer Spot. And I plead with him. I'm like, Burrell, please, please, will you come out from behind this desk and will you go home? And he looked at me and he said, Mr. Charles, can I live here at Hospitality House? He didn't want to leave. And I said, man, Burrell, not only can you not live, live here, but I'm afraid if you don't leave right now, mom ain't going to let you come back tomorrow. <laughs> and so um, I walked out to the car with them and was really trying to kind of read mom and try to gauge mom and was trying to, you know, kind of put a good word in for Burrell if I could, because I thought he was going to get lit up <laughs> before they got in the car. But but mom wasn't that way. Mom was really loving. She was really kind, and I was really surprised by the amount of patience that she had. Um, but I really kind of got this sense of uh, desperateness, you know, kind of what's going to work for my son. Like her older son said, Charles, I hope that Hospitality House will work for Burrell. Kind of was really seeming that for a second grader, they're running out of options. You know, he actually came up to me the other day, asked me, said, can I call you Uncle Charles? I said, absolutely, you can call me Uncle Charles. I love that young man. And there's so many other young kids. They're worth it. They're worth our love. They're worth our attention. They're worth our sacrifice. So our founder, Woody Larson, uh, came up with this crafty idea that maybe through athletics, he could compel kids on the north side of Minneapolis to come in. And then through engaging with them through athletics, maybe he would be able to teach them discipline and things of that nature. But his ultimate goal was to lead them to Christ. And so over the years, um, for very good reason, I think that education um, has really kind of took a driving seat at Hospitality House. And I'm not here to uh, do away with education by any means, but I do believe that striking balance and remembering where we were founded and remembering where our roots are, which was in athletics, but ultimately in the cross and leading kids to Christ. And so I'm proud to, uh, to inform everybody that this year we had our first uh, flag football team in over 40 years. The coaches loved it, the parents loved it, and the youth learned and they loved it. When I come into Hospitality House, and if you've ever come in, you've probably been overwhelmed by the sense of love that's in that space. The love that's between the teachers, the love that's between the students. You know, it's just a place that's overflowing full of love. 
but it's also a space that's in dire need of update and uh, an improvement. And so in pushing excellence, um, I really felt this strong conviction to say, we have to make sure that we're giving the kids the best that we absolutely can. Does the space say, I love you? We may say, I love you through our actions, but as you've heard, Hospitality House is a second home to many of our kids. Oftentimes the kids are consequence are punished by their parents by not allowing them to come to Hospitality House. Matter of fact, uh, uh, Sherelle, and Bish, uh, Sherelle and Burrell's mom told me, she said, my son hates going to school but he loves coming to Hospitality House every day after school. So kind of uses, you know, the after school program at Hospitality House is kind of a carrot to get him to get through the day at school and do a good job. We're gonna need support. We're gonna need people that's gonna come around side us and help us make this a possibility and a reality so that Hospitality House doesn't only feel like Wakanda, but it also begins to start to look like Wakanda. But, but we're not faith-based, we're Christian. We're not ashamed of that. We're not ashamed of that. I could go get millions of dollars if I struck Christ out of the mission of Hospitality House from, from the government. That's something we're not willing to do. That's something that our founder said Hospitality House should never do. And so we won't do that. We stand on principle. We stand on God's word. We stand on love. And I thank you guys for your support. Thank you for being there with us tonight. Uh, my mother, she struggled to find a safe space and Minneapolis for me to be growing up. And I practically begged my mother year after year to allow me to play youth sports. Um, until one day my mother had a conversation with the late Miss Brenda Hunter. Uh, she practically just said, bring him home. You know, uh, from that point on, I had a safe haven in Minneapolis. Uh, Hospitality House presented an opportunity and access that kids in our community will lack if otherwise. Uh, to be short, Hospitality House provided a Christian-based center where children can grow up as a family. But Hospitality House has brought mentors into my life that I'm still connected to to this day. Um, it allowed me a space where I was able to continue to grow in Christ and learn the important lessons in life through youth sports and community. Uh, Hospitality House was integral to me becoming the man that I am today. But me personally, I'm looking forward to seeing all that God has for the future of Hospitality House. Thank you. I remember sitting down with the Lord again saying, all right, this is year two. It's not working. What is plan B? And he, he said, well, let me point out something to you. What's that first characteristic of love? Love is patient. Some versions say love is long suffering. <laughs> And some versions say, love is long suffering with kindness. And I said, he said, basically, do you love these kids? Well, well, <laughs> let me think about it. And um, he convinced me to year three. Year three started out the same way, but about halfway through the season, some of the players came up to me and said, hey, coach, you really got to roll up your windows in your car and lock your car door. And I said, my car is like 100 feet away. Why do I got to do that? This was, well, people come and spit in your windows. They're open your cars, take everything and run. And I go, oh, that's, that sounds like, yeah, I could understand that. And, but they started to care about me. These players, after three years, these players actually started to care about me. And so... <clears throat> A little bit later, I was driving home, listening to KTIS, and on the radio, there was a story about a guy who left his profession and went into full-time ministry in the inner city. And I'm pretty sure it was an engineer. And I said, no way, no way. And I drove home, I don't think it was the same day, but I think it was a couple days later, I walked through the door after spending a light, nice, wonderful day at Medtronic designing pacemakers. That's what I did. I walk in the door, had a good day. My wife's on the phone with her friend. She goes, hey, dear, Sylvia wants to know when you're going to go into full-time ministry. And I said, never. <laughs> I said, I can't do that. I have a family to take care of. Well, anyway, uh, I lost the argument with God. 
In 2001, I went into full ministry at Hospitality House. I've been again. <laughs> My dad, who I love deeply, asked me, what is the matter with you? Why would you leave engineering and go to the inner city to coach a bunch of kids? I said, well, it's kind of a long story, dad. And he didn't understand. And I don't think I really understood either. But he had a friend named Jim Anderson, and Jim Anderson was a member of a flying club at Lake Elmo. And we got together with this flying club. We brought Tyrus's baseball team out there. They had four or five pilots. We went flying. It was just a beautiful time. And I got a call from my dad a couple of days later. You know, I, I felt that I had disappointed my dad and I loved my dad. It was a big deal for me. It was tough. I got a call from my dad a couple of days later and he said, I talked to Jim Anderson, you know, the guy in the pilot. He said, he just had a great time with all your kids out there flying. He said, it was phenomenal. And my dad said to me, you know, I think what you're doing is a good thing, George. You're doing a good job. 10 years after my 1998 Hall of Fame team, uh, I was sitting down in the lobby of Hospitality House, and um, one of the players on that team uh, came to our after school program. His name was D'Artanian, kind of a, a free-spirited young man. I had to kick him out of Hospitality House because of his behavior. It wasn't so good. 10 years later, D'Artanian comes through the doors. He sees me. He looks at me. He gets this perplex, you know, expression on his face. And he goes, you're still here? <laughs> <laughs> and I could tell that God, in me just being there, had begun to challenge D'Artagnan on what is love. And he, he just left. He just walked out the door. Well, last summer, I was out in the playground watching the kids. And this big black car drives up and black tinted windows, kind of like your car, Charles. <laughs> you can't see in it. You can't see what's going on. And so I'm sitting, sitting about a few feet away. And so I start backing up and go, uh oh, what's going on? Because they pulled up right next to me. So the window starts to slowly go down. And here's D'Artagnan with a big smile on his face. And he looks at me. Hey, Coach G, are you still here? <laughs> and it was just, he got out of the car, gave me a big hug, and we had a good talk. He says, I'm doing well. I got this thing going on. And I just said, whoa, okay, Lord. <laughs> I learned a little bit about that. And that was 20, 26 years from 1998. I could see how God impacts other people, but more than anything, as you look back, I could see how God impacted me. I was blessed to be a blessing. I was beginning to change. I'm still kind of rough around the edges, but God's love is continuing to change me. I hope, dear, is that correct? Is my being changed? <laughs> Reb says, how about we give the Lord a big hand clap? <laughs> Thank you all. On behalf of Hospitality House, George, uh, we thank you for your over 25 years of service. Uh, we're, we're extremely grateful. And um, in a lot of ways, I feel indebted to you as I feel indebted to Rev. You know, as I spoke to my friends, as I was praying about coming on board at Hospitality House, the one thing that they, because you were pivotal on the, on the search team, you were a member on that search committee. And as you interviewed the people who wrote references for me, and we were painfully wondering what was taking so long. <laughs> they took forever. <laughs> the one thing that they did say, as I said, it really seems like that George loves Hospitality House and he really, really wanna make sure that it goes to the right person. And so, your heart for Hospitality House speaks volumes. Your commitment speaks volumes. And this is just a small token of our appreciation. Thank you, Charles. Yeah. It says, 
Are you still here? <laughs> I do want to thank you all. I want to thank especially my family. And you got to thank your mom, right? Happy birthday, mom. Thank you, guys. Each year, a young man and woman are selected who show strong Christian character on and off the field and represent what God continues to accomplish at Hospitality House. It is with great pleasure to present these awards. Our first winner... Courtney Belfield. Come on up, Courtney. Courtney likes volleyball, reading, and math. Her values include family, God, her, and her friends. She says her favorite staff member is Miss Belinda. She teaches ladies how to respect themselves. She hopes to make Hospitality House better by teaching our kids more about God and supporting them. Please join me in awarding the Woody Larson Christian Athlete Award to Courtney Belfield. This next young man is something, man. Um, for those that don't know his story, he lost his parents. Uh, he was adopted. He lost his adopted mom, Miss Brenda. And he is one tough, cool dude, man. When he saw me tonight, he came over because I met him last year and he remembered it. And he put his hand out and said, Mr. Max is a bishop. I said, I know who you are. Because <laughs> you're an inspiration to all of us. You are something, buddy. Bishop Hooks is a sixth grader. He's attended Hospitality House since kindergarten. He has played basketball, his favorite sport for Hospitality House, every year since joining the program. He also plays on the baseball teams. Recently, he was a key player on Hospitality House's first flag football team in 40 years. And Bishop loves all sports. He enjoys learning about God and enjoys having Mr. Chris teach him about being a man of God. He says his uncle, Reverend Hunter, helped me a lot and is very thankful for the opportunity Hospitality House gives him. I want to thank you, Bishop, for showing us the way, too. Because this, my friend, is a two-way street. And you are a shining example beyond your years and what you ever could imagine. It is my privilege and my honor to award the Woody Larson Christian Athlete Award to Bishop, Bishop Hooks. Sean, buddy. We'd encourage you to prayerfully consider and give. We thank you for the consideration. We pray that the Spirit moves and makes you a little uncomfortable because I think God does amazing things. I know the Spirit does when you get a little uncomfortable for the great blessings that He delivers to Hospitality House. Multiply the impact of every dollar donated and every minute volunteered. Thank you all for what to you for keeping Hospitality House going for almost 65 years. Continue to be with us and to lead us as we grow our blessing hub in North Minneapolis. We promise to seek your kingdom first in all things and to pray and work for continued unity in your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everybody. Uh, just keep safe as you get out on the roads there, and uh, we love you. Welcome to the family.